Thanks, Lindsay. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, I am really excited to be here with you. Uh, Lindsay is right. I have been involved in different parts of different business weeks for a very long time. And, you know, I when I have worked directly with the Willapa um, Business Week program, I've always told people it is my favorite week of the year. Um, I love to participate. I love to see all the activity. And this is great that I get to be a part of more than one week a year. Um, so I'm excited to talk to you about the week that you're going to have and um, just some opportunities that I think you should try to take while you're here this week. Um, the first thing I want to do, and uh, this is audience participation. Probably the easiest way to participate is to just put your answer up in the chat. But if you would rather raise your hand and have Katie or Lindsay or someone call on you, um, that will work too. I can't guarantee I will notice that though, but I can monitor the chat. Um, so I would like to know what your expectations are for the week. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think is expected of you? What are you looking forward to? What are you nervous? Um, let's just take a few minutes and hear a few of those things from you guys, please. And if you don't have any, I have some that I can uh, start us off with, but let's see what you got. All right. Okay, well, I'll start with my first one because um, I don't see anything in the chat yet. Uh, I know you're going to have a great time. Uh, all right, Jack says, maintaining communication between colleagues. Yes, absolutely. Communication is huge. Um, if you don't communicate well, it's going to be a hard week, but I'm not worried. I know you're going to communicate well. You're going to get a lot of tips on how to do that if you're not comfortable doing it already. Um, Sigh, hoping to create good product idea quickly. That's a good idea. Waiting till Thursday is not a winning strategy, um, but you guys are going to have tons of ideas. I think your bigger problem is going to be narrowing it to one idea and not finding an idea would be my guess. Um, Ethan thinks we're going to learn about clean energy. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I think you will learn a lot of stuff, whether it's what you want to do for the future, whether it's just something you're interested in for the week, I think you're going to learn a lot. Um, meeting new people, learning about how business runs, how to start one. Absolutely. Um, we're going to talk more about meeting new people in just a few minutes, uh, Vera. So that's great. Uh, I appreciate all of those answers. Uh, Jason, let me see. I missed yours there. Be an asset to your company, help the company grow. Yeah, um, not just an asset, but with these small teams that you guys are on, you have to participate and you have to do so much. Um, it's not going to be a support role for anybody. It's going to be an active role for all of you all week long, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, that's good. I think um, in addition to those, a couple of the ones I have here, you're going to be better prepared for whatever your next career step is, whether that's college, whether that's trade school, whether that's straight in the job market, whether that's a summer job, you're going to be better prepared after this week. Um, and then a couple of really nice things that I don't really get talked about as much. Um, you're going to be respected for the effort that you make this week. Um, the people in your group are going to respect what you do, and it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be really rewarding. Um, and my guess is you will make at least one connection this week that will last longer than this week. You might make more than that, but my suspicion is at least one person that you come into contact with, with this week, you know, whether it's lifelong friend, whether it's um, letter of recommendation for college or a job, something is going to show up that's going to outlast the week. So um, look forward to that, please. Uh, I don't know the exact math, and I could have checked with Andrea, but I think that less than 1% of Washington State students participate. And I know I've got folks from not just Washington State um, here, but just want to highlight, this is a really unique experience you guys get. Um, and so I want you to make the most of it uh, for the week. And uh, hopefully my uh, presentation today will help you a little bit with that. Um, I think that my expectation of you is 
this might be Monday. This might be what you're feeling like a little bit um, overwhelmed, a little bit out of your element. By Friday, you will all be, um, you will all be Neo and you will all be uh, ready to take on whatever comes next. So um, I'm looking forward to following up and see how the week went for folks. Um, I've got a few stories to tell. Um, the focus of what I wanna go over in the next few minutes is um, trying something new. Uh, you're gonna, we know there's gonna be great things that happen, you know, from the curriculum, from meeting new people, but this is also an opportunity to, these are all people you haven't met before for the most part. Um, this is a safe space for you to try something new. This is a safe space to be innovative in ways that maybe you haven't been before. And so I really want to take this time to encourage you to use that space, to use that ability to branch out and try something that maybe you haven't felt comfortable trying in the past. Uh, so I wanna to talk to you about that. I have a few examples, both of businesses, of me, of uh, we're gonna talk some musicians. Um, so it's gonna be a good and very rapid presentation, but here we go. Um, so I don't know if anybody recognizes this logo. It's their original logo from 1888, uh, but this is the Eastman Kodak Company. And like I said, started in 1888. They wanted to sell cameras very cheap and they wanted to make all their money on selling people film and the supplies to develop their film. So you got the camera really cheap but they hooked you in and sold you all the supplies over and over and over at a higher margin and did very well with that for a very long time. Uh, almost a hundred years goes by, 1975, Kodak actually develops the very first digital camera, 1975. And management who loved their film cameras and loved the money they were bringing in, basically told the inventor, that's cute, but don't tell anybody about it. Um, they saw it as a threat. It was kind of a thing that they developed, patented, and held on to and didn't do anything with because they saw it as a threat to their business. Um, eventually, they developed even the first megapixel, which is when you start getting uh, digital cameras that you can actually tell what you're looking at. Um, and then in 1989, their CEO retired and they had two options. They could go with someone from the tech industry or they could go with someone internal and someone from the film industry. They chose a 30 year camera and film uh, veteran to be the CEO in 1989. And they continued to not push digital cameras. Finally, by 1996, they're like, okay, okay, we will release. It's called the Kodak Advantix. It's a digital camera. It's amazing. You still had to print your digital camera pictures on film. That was the only thing they were going to let you do with that camera. Meanwhile, everybody's coming out with digital cameras. And by 2007, Kodak spends most of its time suing people, not even making products. They're just trying to make money by suing people over digital cameras. 2012, Kodak goes bankrupt. They didn't innovate. They didn't try anything new. They stuck with film and film cameras from 1888 all the way through 2012, only begrudgingly innovating and trying something new. Just did not work in the long run. Um, now, Another example, Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing Company starts around the same time, 1902. Their purpose was to mine corundum, which was a, a mineral that grows in, or that is in the ground. Um, their mine had no, their mine didn't have any. So they started making sandpaper instead. And they started focusing on sandpaper and different ways to make it and better ways to make it. In 1921, they invented wet sandpaper so you can do sanding that leaves a nice glossy finish. And so that's how like car paint and other glossy paints look so nice is you can wet sand them. Uh, so it was back in 1921. In 1949, they hired a CEO. This was an internal person 
Um, his name was William McKnight. But unlike Kodak, uh, Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing had always focused on innovation. So their internal CEO was very pro-innovation. And he told people, listen to every idea, no matter how absurd it may sound at first. If you put fences around people, you get sheep. So he wanted, he wanted them to try whatever they could come up with. Um, and what this led to was in the 50s, they invented Teflon and sold it to DuPont. They invented a synthetic rubber that was used on Apollo astronaut boots that went to the moon. They invented the first asthma inhaler and spun that off into an entire pharmaceutical division that was, looked nothing like the sandpaper division they were in 1905, just 50 years earlier. Um, by the time 2009 comes around, they are known just as 3M. Um, so if you ever were curious, that's what the 3Ms in 3M stand for, Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing. Um, they have recently made a Bluetooth stethoscope that was used on, one person was on Earth, one person was on the International Space Station. They were listening to the astronaut's heart with that stethoscope, pretty amazing. And in 2009, they were still improving sandpaper. They didn't ever stop. They just kept making it better. Anything they can figure out, they figured out a way to make it last four times as long by using a different shape grain of uh, grit in their sandpaper. 3M innovates. 3M wants to innovate and 3M is happy to innovate even if it means they fail. They've had plenty of failed products and I don't have a list that you can go online and you can find all sorts of things that 3M has tried and failed at. And they didn't let that stop them. They just kept pushing and innovating. Um, so a really nice juxtaposition between that company that just wants to be the way they are and doesn't care that the world is changing and that company that wants to be leading that change. Um, both were successful up until a point. Um, but very different strategies. And so just always nice to keep that in mind. So how about me? I told you we're gonna get a story about me. Um, so this is my story. So I was, I was Kodak when I was younger. I was very much Kodak. I liked who I was. I still like who I am, but I liked who I was and I didn't wanna change. I didn't see any reason to change. I was a very picky eater you know, for decades and missed out on a lot of good food. Um, I liked Metallica. So I grew up in the 80s and the 90s. So I liked Metallica. And if it wasn't Metallica, I didn't want to listen to it. Not only that, if you liked something that wasn't Metallica, I didn't like you. And I feel bad about that. But um, that was the way I was back then. Um, I had a total meltdown in high school one day when they wanted us to do square dancing in gym class because guys like me that listen to Metallica, we don't square dance, right? Like it was, um, it just wasn't gonna happen. It was very embarrassing. It was, um, I look back on it and I really learned a lot from it. Um, but I also know that I was just, I didn't wanna change anything for anybody. And I started to want to change, but I, I was scared. I didn't think that people would accept it. I thought people would question why I was doing it. Um, and so really until I was in my twenties, I didn't take the opportunity. Now, finally in my twenties, uh, I did start changing myself and I started caring less what others thought of me. I cut my hair. Oh, I forgot to mention back then I had a big, big mullet for a long, long time. Um, so cut that. I started listening to different music. I started caring about the environment. Um, I took a communications course in college that I had to take. It had a public speaking class in it. I actually liked it so much. I started taking public speaking courses and I started looking for opportunities to talk to people in public, in big groups, um, something I would have never thought I wanted to try. I love it now. That's part of why I'm so excited to talk to you guys today. And I wish we were 
in an auditorium somewhere doing it. I look forward to that very soon. Um, but I started to be comfortable with that idea that I didn't have to be exactly what I used to be. I didn't have to be exactly what people expected me to be. Um, and it felt really good. And it culminated in uh, a couple of years ago, I was traveling for work. I was at a hotel. There was clearly a party going on in the um, ballroom of the hotel. And I crashed a wedding, a costume wedding party, and got to carry the groom around on the chair as everyone cheered. Um, this is not me. This is another attendee. This is someone being Mick Jagger uh, doing karaoke at this very fun wedding party. So I could have never had that experience if I would have been afraid of what people thought of me, if I would have been afraid to change, if I would have been afraid to take a chance. And I had such a good time and it's such a great story. Um, and so I encourage you to think about the same kinds of things for yourself. Um, that's the last you'll hear about me, I think. Um, another way to think about change and innovation um, and you know, taking opportunities is think about the musicians you like and think about how, first of all, how risky it is for those people to change. Because if you're a musician these days, your appearance is unfortunately as important as your music is. So if you change your sound or if you change your style or anything like that, you're taking a huge risk, not just that people will question you, your livelihood is on the line, but these people do it and they, you're gonna see they don't always um, succeed, but a lot of times they succeed and they are better off for the change they made. So we'll do a little guessing game here. Um, again, you guys can type it out in the chat. You're probably gonna be really quick at guessing who most of these are, but uh, we'll see. So back in the 90s, uh, she was in a, an alternative group. And this is how I got to know and like her music. So does anybody know who this is? I don't see. What if I give you this picture? Does anybody know? Gwen Stefani. That is right. Yes, I don't recognize this Gwen Stefani at all. I am, I am all about the 90s, uh, no doubt, Gwen Stefani. But you can see that difference, right? And it wasn't overnight, but um, she changed. And she didn't care what people thought. Um, and she's doing pretty well for herself, as far as I can tell. Um, how about this guy? Anybody recognize him from, this would have probably been... 85 or 86 would be my guess. All right. How about this guy? No. All right. That's okay. This is James Hatfield from Metallica. Um, while I did cut my hair and change a lot of things, I do still very much like Metallica. Um, these guys, I wonder what this guy would think of what he has become with the faux hawk and the retro microphone and the big wide guitar strap. And uh, what he did back in 85 was great. What he does now is great. Was there a bad couple of years in there? Yeah, maybe so. Um, but he has really changed and Metallica has only gotten bigger and bigger and bigger uh, as he has gone through. Okay, I, I think you might know these folks. These, uh, these guys kind of started the whole, it's okay to change what you look like and change what you sound like. And they also did pretty well. Anybody? Say your beats, right? What's that? Beatles. Beatles. Yep. And here they are like 10 years later at the same exact hotel in the same exact, exact place. Um, it's two of their album covers, actually. Um, they don't look anything like they did back when there were those little guys from uh, Liverpool. 
their music changed. They were accepted the whole time. They made, sometimes they made some very big changes in what they looked like and what they sounded like, but their fans stuck with them and they got more fans um, and it worked out obviously very well for them. Ooh, this one is hard. Does anybody recognize who this is? This one did not go so well. I will give you a hint. Um, and this one probably predates most of you, but that's okay. I think you will recognize him in what he normally looks like. That's Garth Brooks. I don't know if anybody remembers uh, or has ever heard. Uh, in the 90s, he put out an alternative rock album under the name Chris Gaines. And he even hosted Saturday Night Live as Garth Brooks and performed as the musical guest as Chris Gaines, acting like they were two different people. Um, it did not go well. He tried to change. People did not accept it. But you know what? He went back to being Garth Brooks and he's fine. It, he tried it. It didn't work. He kept going. Um, it's a nice, it's a nice reminder that yeah, it doesn't always work. But nobody is out there not buying Garth Brooks tickets because he was Chris Gaines for two years. Nobody is out there not inviting him to dinner because he put out an album as Chris Gaines once upon a time. I think he's doing over okay. And then this is the last picture. I think does anybody recognize this keyboard player? Uh, she was in kind of a, it was like a blues rock band. Um, I think this would have been late 90s or early 2000s. That's Lady Gaga. Um, back when she was Stephanie Germanata. Um, she is the queen of changing her appearance, right? Um, whether it's a meat dress, whether it's fancy, whether it's um, ridiculous sunglasses. She changes everything and everybody is fine with it. Everybody loves her for it. Um, if she just looked like this, I don't think she would be nearly as popular. Although she's a very good musician, um, but that's not what people know her for. So, so yeah, musicians put it all on the line to change what they are or what they look like or what they sound like. And, you know, there's a bunch of reasons why they might do it. Maybe you could say they're selling out. You could say they're just keeping up with what's popular. Maybe it's that they got successful and they were able to do what they really wanted to, not what they needed to do to get paid. The thing is they changed, they took a chance. It didn't always work if we remember Garth, um, but they took that chance. Um, and so I would encourage you to think about that. So just to wrap things up here, um, you are in groups with people, like I said, you haven't met before and they don't know what your favorite food was last week. They don't know what the most played song in Spotify was for you last year. Um, I checked mine was a song called Endless, uh, Europe Endless by Kraftwerk, which is about as far away from Metallica as you can get and still be popular music. Um, but yeah, these people you are with, they don't have any expectations of you except that you participate. So maybe you have always been, um, you know, wanting to try something artistic, but it just wasn't what you did before and you were worried that people would think it was odd if you tried it out. Well, now's your chance. Or maybe you are always the one that's doing the artistic stuff and you want to try something new but everybody always just puts the markers and paints in your hands and doesn't let you try anything else this is your week this is your opportunity to try something new um, if you want and then one last quote to close it out the other thing though is i'm not telling you you have to change i'm not telling you you are not good how you are um, if you like what you are, if you are doing things you want to be doing, that is awesome. This is only, uh, my only message here is if you want to try something out, try something out this week. Um, and if you like it and you want to stick with it, 
and you go back to you know family and friends and school and you are a little different just blame it on business week and everything will be all right so that's all i have for you guys we have just a couple minutes left does anybody have a quick question or two for me before we let you get back to your week Yeah, I had a quick question. Okay, go ahead. When you're talking about like changing things about yourself, I guess for you, or like how do you know that something is worth changing? Like how, how do you know if something is something that you should change about yourself? I guess for me, it was, um, I don't know. I think I felt the desire to change long before I would do it. Um, and sometimes it's just something that I, you know, didn't feel like I was um, contributing right. So like I think about uh, recycling and, and caring about the environment. And I did, I wasn't like that before. And it's hard to say what caused me to change, but I decided, you know what, this is important. And it, it comes down to a point where maybe you recognize that the need to change what you're doing is more important than the potential fallout you may get from the change. Um, and it's not always, I don't wanna say it's always changing things because you feel guilty. It's changing things because you're interested. Like, like I said, with music, I, was, I just only wanted to listen to heavy metal, but you know what? There's nothing wrong with Britney Spears. There are good Britney Spears songs out there. There are great Lady Gaga songs out there. There are decent Ed Sheeran songs out there. And if I box myself in, I am just causing myself to miss out. And once I started recognizing that I was causing myself to miss out on things that were good, that's when I was like, you know what? I would rather be able to enjoy Lady Gaga than to... Um, and deal with potential fallout than to not enjoy it. I hope that answers your question. I think we have time for one more question before we move on. Okay, well, thank you all so much for listening. Thank you all so much for participating. 